Well, welcome again to the Mesa City Council meeting for March the 21st. I don't know that all of our council is present for the meeting. Uh, we'll begin our meeting this evening with an invocation after, offered by Pastor Mark Burns with the Redemption Church Gateway, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. So please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the uh, for the pledge. Pastor, welcome. I'm sorry, I meant to chat with you before. Just yeah, take it away. Thank you. It's a huge honor to be here. I'm a Mesa born and native, grew up here. Uh, and after 15 years of being in Turkey, serving in Turkey, it's uh, my honor to be here to bless this meeting tonight. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for the freedoms that we have in this country. I thank you uh, that all authority comes from you and how uh, you have given wisdom and power to the people here. And you've provided a platform for the people of this city to come and to express their needs, uh, their desires, and to have a community that is based on justice and truth. And we humbly be come before you and ask that you would give your blessing, your wisdom, and your strength to the people here uh, to carry out uh, their offices. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, uh, thank you again, Pastor Burns, and welcome back to Mesa. Good to have you back home. Uh, we do have a few items under our awards and recognitions today. Uh, first of all, I'm pleased to announce that uh, several of us traveled back to the National League of Cities convention a week or two ago in Washington, D.C., and there Mesa uh, was awarded the 2022 Cultural Diversity Award for our two-day Dia de los Muertos celebration. Everyone who's been to that understands why we would win the national award. It's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful event that we're very proud of. For almost two decades, thousands gather in Mesa to celebrate this rich Mexican tradition with music, performances, traditional, traditional foods, and a community altar featuring local artists. I'd like to invite Councilmember Luna to tell us more about that event. Mr. Luna. Thank you, Mayor Giles, I appreciate it. It was an honor to attend the National League of Cities award ceremony with you in DC last week. As you mentioned, Dia de los Muertos draws thousands of people every single year. In fact, last October was our most successful year so far. More than 30,000 people attended this two-day festival, which features a bustling mercado, mouth-watering food, and a variety of community altars featuring local artists and organizations. We have a committee led by Mandy Tripoli, which plans a celebration well in advance. I've seen how hard they work every year to make, it sh make sure it runs smoothly, so this award wouldn't have been possible without our Dia de los Muertos Committee, so I wanna thank them. Uh, we appreciate all who support programs that reflect our diverse Mesa community. This festival is an example of the equity inclusion we strive to have here in the city of Mesa. So with that, Mayor, I think. Yes, so uh, uh, Council, if you don't mind, uh, please join me uh, at the podium to present this award. We're, uh, we're uh, pleased that Andrea Alacote, our diversity manager, and Cindy Orenstein, our arts and cultural director, are present to receive the award. So let's, uh, let's go present them with this award. That you are. Well, she's taking it for now. <laughs> I get to be interested. <laughs> 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 
So uh, sometimes we talk about the hashtag why I live in Mesa and Dia de, los Mar Dia de los Muertos is definitely one of those hashtag why I live in Mesa events. So if you live in our city and you haven't gone to this event in October, make sure you notice when it's up and, and please come out and enjoy it. The other hashtag why I live in Mesa moment, I want to, uh, no one's commented yet on my wardrobe for the, for the <laughs> evening, but uh, uh, I was, uh, another reason to live in Mesa, Arizona is spring training. And we are so grateful that uh, the labor dispute that delayed spring training has been resolved and uh, we're back at, at two stadiums between now and April the 4th uh, with spring training baseball. So if, if you're, even if you're not a baseball fan, you would enjoy going to these spring training games. They are a lot of fun and uh, one of those great reasons why you want to live in Mesa, Arizona. So that uh, concludes our awards and recognitions. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Could you please proceed with reading the consent agenda? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. These are the items on the consent agenda. All items listed with an asterisk will be considered as a group by the City Council and will be enacted with one motion. There will be no separate discussion unless a Council Member or a citizen request, in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered as a separate item. Item two, approval of minutes of previous meetings as written. Item 3A, Act on Liquor License Application for American Patriots Riders Club, one day event April 2nd, 922 South Country Club Drive. Item 3B, Act on Liquor License Application for Perimeter Bicycling Association of America, one day event April 2nd at Red Mountain Park, 7745 East Brown Road. Item 3C, Act on Liquor License Application for Trace Amigos, 253 East Broadway Road. Item 4A, Act on Six Month Extension and Dollar Limit Increase to the Term Contract for Medical Billing Services for the Business Service services in Mesa Fire and Medical Departments. The purchase is funded by the Ambulance Transport Fund. Item 4B, act on contract to purchase a capital improvement program project management solution for the engineering department. Item 4C, act on dollar limit increase to the term contract for front load refuse and roll off containers for the environmental management and sustainability department. Item 4D, act on dollar limit increase to the term contract for park, playground and aquatics facility poured in place servicing and synthetic turf repairs, maintenance and installation for the Parks, Recreation and Community Facilities Department. Item 4E, act on three-year term contract with two years of renewal options for turf renovation, removal, preparation and installation services for the Parks, Recreation and Community Facilities Department. Item 4F, act on one-year renewal with a one-year renewal option to the term contract for asphalt materials for the transportation, water resources and energy resources departments. Item 4G, act on two-year term contract with three years of renewal options for ITRON FC C300 handheld annual maintenance parts and refurbished handhelds for the Water Resources Department. Item 4A, check on one year term contract for Argon gas and tank rental for the Water Resources Department. Item 4I, act on three year term contract with two years of renewal options for weed abatement and landscaping services for the Water Resources Department. Item 5A, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to enter into an amended and restated water transportation agreement with the Salt River Valley Water Users Association regarding use of association canals, laterals, and drainage ditches. Item 5B, act on resolution approving and authorizing the city manager to accept funding made available through an organizational relief grant by the Arizona Commission on the Arts. The grant is funded with American Rescue Plan Act relief funds and will be used for general organization relief due to COVID. Item 5C, Act on Resolution regarding ZON 21-01238 for property generally located north of Southern Avenue on the west side of Stapley Drive. Item 6A, Introduction of Ordinance regarding ZON 21-00731 for property generally located north of McDowell Road on the west side of Brecker Road. Modification of the Longbow Park Planned Area Development Overlay, rezone Council Use Permit and Site Plan Review to allow for a mixed-use development. Item 7A, Act on Ordinance amending Title 4, Chapter 1, Sections 3 and 4, requiring permits for solar panel installations that are greater than 10,000 square feet and systems not installed by a licensed contractor. Item 7B, Act on Ordinance amending Title 4, Chapter 2, Section 1 of the Adopted International Building Code relating to buildings and structures occupied by more than 10 persons and aligning the Building and Fire Protection Code in Chapter 9. Item 7C, Act on Ordinance amending Title 4, Chapter 5, Section 4 of the Plumbing Code amending the requirement for drinking fountains to small businesses with less than 50 occupants. Item 7D, Act on Ordinance amending Title 4, Chapter 9, Section B of the Adopted International Energy Code relating to random testing of air duct systems for production homes. Item 7E, Act on Ordinance amending Title 4, Chapter 10, Section 10 of the Mesa Swimming Pool and Spa Code relating to clarification of pool owner responsibilities. Item 7F, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 21-00593 for property generally located west of the 202 Red Mountain Freeway on the north side of University Drive. 
rezone with planned area development overlay to allow for small lot, single residence development. Item 7G, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 21-00644 for property generally located north of Jermaine Road on the east side of Ellsworth Road. Rezone and site plan review to allow for an industrial park. Item 7H, Act on Ordinance regarding ZON 21-00620 for property located north of Pecos Road and east of Sossman Road. Rezone with plan area development overlay and site plan review to allow for an industrial development. Items 8A and 8B have been removed from the consent agenda. Mayor and Council Members, these are the items on the consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Christopher. Ms. Mosley, have we received any other cards uh, to remove an item from the consent agenda? No, Mayor, no others. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Luna, seconded by Mr. Thompson for approval of the consent agenda. Please vote. Thank you. Uh, the motion to approve the consent agenda passes unanimously. Uh, the next item on our agenda then is item 8A and 8B. Uh, this is to uh, discuss, receive public comment, and take action on a, an annexation and zoning related to the East Point development. Uh, we did have a request to speak on this item. Uh, Ms. Mosley, is that person on the telephone? Yes, yes. Wayne Stabelski is on the line. Thank you, Mr. Stabelski. Uh, welcome to the City Council meeting. We'd uh, love to hear what you have to tell us about this zoning case. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Appreciate the time. I'm just calling in to make sure that our items that uh, we had discussed with the developer were uh, agreed upon and put into motion in the City Council meetings of the arrangements of the houses along the south side. And that was uh, to make sure that this was taken care of. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I know that, that you and Mr. Thompson and our, our staff have met with the developer and, and I, it, it's rewarding. To, I see the developers, uh, a representative nodding their heads. So I, I believe we've, we've reached an agreement on some of your concerns. Is that correct? Okay, so. That is correct. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you for working with us to, uh, to make sure that this was done correctly. Um, that being You're very welcome, thank you. Thank you. I see that Mr. Motion, or Mr. Thompson has made a motion seconded by Mr. Luna. Is there any discussion on this item? Uh, if not, please vote. Mayor, just to clarify, this is for items 8A and 8B. Uh, you, you can do much. one motion for both items. I just want to clarify. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and let, let's make sure that that's clear on the record, that this is a motion for both items 8A and 8B considered together, which is the same, the same uh, uh, subject matter. All right, thank you. That uh, passes unanimously. Uh, next item on our agenda is agenda item 9A. This is a presentation to take action on the City of Mesa's single audit action report for the fiscal year 2021 audit report. Thank you. We're Good evening. Appreciate I'm, our I'm, auditors I'm, being here. Thank yep. you. I'm Sandy Kronstrom. I'm a principal with Clifton Larson, Larson Allen. We do the city's annual audit. I was here a while back and we presented the ACF, ACFR. I got to get that right now. Um, and at that time, we talked about there, there were no um, internal control findings, no financial statement findings um, related to that piece of the audit. We came back, we wrapped up the federal compliance piece, which is the single audit report that you have here tonight. Um, we also did not have any findings related to those programs. Um, the city of Mesa um, in the single audit world is considered a low risk auditee, which means that um, you have not had any material weaknesses over your internal controls or any of your federal programs in the last two years. What that means for us as auditors is we're selecting the programs to test and figuring out you know, which ones have to be done. We are required to select at least 20% of your federal dollars to test. Um, so this year, because of all the COVID-19 monies that were received, we actually ended up testing four separate programs and we ended up testing 76% of your dollars um, through the single audit. Um, again, we had no findings and no recommendations related to that. Um, and I think that's probably it. <laughs> Thank you. And again, uh, this is a, a special, uh, we, we, in a normal year we don't do this, but because of all the, the federal programs that uh, that we've been receiving. Sandy, maybe maybe explain why we didn't we only do the single audit at the same time when we did the CAFR. Because it's not that 
Do, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. Maybe that'd be helpful. So, so some of the compliance requirements did not come out from the federal government until pretty late in the game. So um, in order to get your, your financial statements issued in a timely manner by the 1231 deadline, we've we postponed um, wrapping up the single audit piece. Hopefully this year was a little better than last year as far as getting the regulations out. Um, but hopefully that won't be an ongoing issue that we yeah. that so, we issue them separately. Right. So hopefully in subsequent years you'll be here for both. Right. At the same time. At the same, At the same time. time. So yes. that, this is different because of the waiting for the guidelines to come. But of course the money was this, you know it was all new program. So got it. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you, Council. Any any questions or discussion on this item? Yes, this yeah. does require it, 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 it. This does require an action yes. and, and, a, and a motion. So, thank yeah. you very much, ladies, thank and you. thank you for your, your work on the audit. Appreciate it. Thank you. And congratulations, Irma, and our our, our finance staff for again having no uh, re nothing remarkable coming out of that audit. Yes, thank you. And it's also the departments that receive the funds. So it also would have been the housing and also the um, economic development that also spent some of the funds. So. I think what's Team remarkable. Effort. about we had a whole lot of money to spend in a short period of time under new kind of, um, I don't want to say different ways, but just it was new for us. So, I mean, we had guidance from our finance department, but our departments were under a lot of, um, I don't know, pressure to make sure we got the money out quickly, but we also ha had to do it um, correctly. So I think for the whole organization up and down, that was remarkable and it, and, and the, and we continue as we're going through the ARPA dollars too, we'll continue to go through all this. But organizationally, I think we did very well and we appreciate the work for everybody doing that. You know, I've said in the past, it was two years ago this month, probably really this week, that yeah. the federal government deposited $96 million into our checking account. And I remember at the time saying, what a wonderful blessing and at the same time, a horrible challenge that is because we could really screw this up. Yep. Right. I mean, there's a lot of strings that came attached with those federal dollars. So the fact that we've gone through the audit and, uh, in a clean way is, is really uh, kudos to everyone on city staff that, that was so responsible with the way that you handled uh, that amazing amount of money. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. We have a motion from Mr. Thompson, seconded by Mr. Aredia. Please vote. Thank you. That motion passes unanimously. Uh, next on our agenda is items from citizen citizens present. Ms. Mosley, do we have any requests to speak? No requests, Mayor. All right, thank you. That then concludes the items on our agenda for this meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? Thank you, Mr. Luna and Mr. Thompson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. We are adjourned.